Hi, I'm John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this particular video, we're going to talk about the finance solver on the TI Inspire CX2. Let's start. We'll start with where to locate the finance solver on your TI Inspire CX2. So for doing that, you need to first add a calculator page, all right? And on the calculator page, when you go to menu, uh, menu number eight would be the finance menu, which gives you these six different options. The first one is the finance solver, all right? So that's where you find it. Now, this is a very unique box, unlike the other um, uh, pop-up menus that you have, say for instance, on the graphing page where you have the window settings, when you want to change the window settings, when you make your entries there and you hit okay, it brings you back to the graphing page, right? That was the app that runs the window settings for a graph. Unlike those kind of menus, the finance solver will do all calculations and will report the result, whatever you're looking for, within this box itself. So it's not going to bring you back to the calculator page. That's not where the final answer is going to be displayed, okay? In fact, to come out of this finance solver, you need to hit escape, okay? So to go back again, you go to menu, finance, finance solver. And remember, this is a unique feature of this box that whatever entries you make, the result will be displayed here. I'll show that quickly, all right? Uh, but first, we need to understand each of these items, what they mean, all right? It's very important to know what these mean and how do we enter them because some values need to be entered with a positive or a negative sign, okay? So we need to be careful. And to maneuver between each of these fields, you can just use the tab, all right? Now to understand what N means, N is the first field. N is not number of years. N is not number of years. Typically in a component interest question or any other financial math question, N we know N would stand for the number of years, but in this case, on this finance solver, as you can see, it says here very clearly N is number of payments. And so for every other field, okay, I would be interest rate. It says here clearly, so you should not be confused, but still, I think I should clarify what this number of payments actually mean as opposed to number of years. So to do that, let's take an example, okay? I'm on my iPad here. This is just a screenshot. And let's just take an example. Uh, uh, let's just say the bank is offering you an interest of 5% per annum uh, compounded uh, twice a year. Compounded twice a year. And so you want to make an investment of, uh, this is what we call principal, right? Your investment is rupees uh, 10,000. And you're going to keep it invested for three years. Okay, so for three years. So you are interested in the amount at the end of three years. The amount at the end of three years, which was uh, invested at 5% per annum being compounded twice every year. Now in that context, remember, although, although you are collecting the money only at the end of three years, the bank is making you a payment two times every year. Two times every year, 5% per annum of the of the principal, okay, because the principal is going to change every six months, correct? Every six months, the principal is going to change because that's how compound interest works. So 5% per annum compounded two times every year. That means the bank is actually paying you two times every year, two times for three years, two times every year for three years. That would mean N is two times three, which is six. You understand how I got six? Let me use another color, all right? Six, N is six because that's the number of payments, not number of years. Be careful, it's not three, okay? It's number of payments. Keep in mind, what is this compounding period, okay? If it was compounded annually, just once, then it'll be one times three and therefore it is three. Not because it is number of years, it's number of payments. Compounded once every year, meaning compounded annually, would mean one times three, that's the number of payments, okay? So don't confuse N with the number of years, it's to be interpreted as the number of payments, all right? And then uh, if we have, let's say, interest is um, five, in this case, we need to enter it on the calculator. This is just my iPad. Now, interest has always to be written per year, okay? That field, interest, that's per annum, percent per annum, 5% per annum. So it has to be per year. So even if it's given in some other form, you need to convert it to per annum, and that's what you need to enter. That's interest is per annum. The next entry is present value, okay? The present value as opposed to the future value, right? The present value is what we have called the principal, all right? Now, whenever the money leaves you, that means you are paying or you are giving, like in this case, you are making that investment, you're going to give it to the bank, it needs to be reported as a negative value, okay? So this has to be written as a negative 10,000. Okay, we are going to make these calculations here, I'm just showing it here. The next field is payment, 
Uh, there's no other payments that you're making. These fields will become more alive when we're looking at questions on loans and amortization. So right now we can just leave it as zero. Future value is what we're interested in. This is what we are going to find out. Uh, future value means what is the money that you're going to get at the end of uh, three years. And I'll show you in a minute. And PPY, to understand this, let's just switch the calculator there. I'm going to enter NS6. And remember, six was the number of payments, okay? That was at the end of three years, uh, twice every year, that is three times two, okay? So that's why we're entering six. It's not six years and it's not three years. It's a number of payments. The interest should always be entered in... Uh, um, per annum, per year. So that was five, according to this made up example. Present value, remember this, we said we need to use the negative sign and use this key to the left of enter, uh, negative, and that is 10,000. I explained why negative, and that's where you need to be careful how you're entering the values, okay? Whenever the money is leaving you, in the sense that whenever you are giving away money, where you're investing money in this case, you need to indicate it with the negative sign. The next field is payment, PMT stands for payment. Uh, this doesn't apply to this particular question on compound interest. Uh, this will be uh, in cases like a loan where you're taking a loan from the bank and when you're making some kind of monthly payment or whether it is um, whatever periodic payment you're making, making, that's where you enter something here, okay? In cases of loans and amortization, when we do those kind of questions, we'll come to this particular field. The future value, the next field is called FV future value. That's what we're interested in finding out. What's the value at the end of three years? But like I said, the answer will be displayed here. Just hit tab and go to the next one. We'll come to that, I'll come to that later, okay? PPY, now this is important, edit payments, Per year payments per year payments per year that is the number of compounding period okay that is two times per year you're going to be paid but remember you're only getting the money after three years okay but you need to interpret it as the bank is going to be making you two payments every year therefore we entered two and therefore that n was the number of payments so they're both linked this uh, payments per year and this number of payments are linked we got the six because there are two payments per year for those three years and therefore that was six and that's why we enter ppy or payments per year as two now when you hit tab you'll go to the next field which is cpy which is edit compounding periods that will automatically be defaulted to two because that's you know that's compounding periods per year all right uh and then this is also key sometimes uh, you know in the case of uh, a loan you might have to make the payment at the start of the month uh, so this is just basically talking about whether you're getting it at the start of the month or at the end of the month or the start of the year or the end of the year, uh, depending upon the question. We'll just say at the end of three years, uh, what should be the money? So we come back to what we're looking for, that particular field. Whichever unknown field you're looking for, that you leave it as zero. In this case, we left future value. That was what we were looking for. And you go back to that field and there you hit enter, not tab this time. Okay, you hit enter it will calculate the value of that investment. Your investment was 10,000 rupees. It was negative, but now it's positive. At the end of three years, you're going to get 11,596.93. Okay, you need to round it off to two decimal places because this is a question on money. So this is just a basic overview of the finance solver, what the different terms mean. N refers to the number of payments. I is interest, remember, per year. PV is present value and every value that you enter, you need to be careful how you are entering with a positive sign or a negative sign. I've explained that when money goes out of your pocket, when you are giving away the money, when you're investing the money, that's negative. When money comes to you, you know, that needs to be indicated as positive. And therefore, this future value that you're going to get at the end of three years is indicated with a positive sign. OK, so be careful of that payment. We'll talk about that in some other question. This video is just an overview of this um, uh, finance solver menu, all right, that menu. And we'll take a look at some more examples on compound interest in the next video. But I just wanted to go over the basic layout of this finance solver and the different fields, okay? FV is a uh, future value. Payments per year needs to be interpreted as how many times you're going to get paid every year. In this case, it was a compounding interest kind of a question where the bank is compounding twice a year. So we entered two, all right? Sometimes it can be an example of a retirement plan where someone has made an investment and uh, every month they're going to get uh, a certain amount paid to them after a certain period of time, right? Uh, so there it will be 12, all right? So, but this PPY, as I said, payments per year is closely linked with this number of payments, okay? Because our example, our made up example was being compounded two times every year for three years, that was six, okay? And uh, whereas this one, uh, the compound period, that would be calculated based on that N and P, okay? The calculator will automatically generate that for you. And the last field is the payment at, okay? Whether you're going to get paid before, at the, at the start of the month, 
or at the end of the month or at the start of the year or at the end of the year. So that also needs to be carefully entered. So this was just to give you a basic overview of the finance solver, the different features of that uh, dialog box and how to enter the values, when to use positive, when to use negative and how to use that how to correctly interpret capital N, uh, the number of payments and the other features. Now, although the example that we used was compound interest, in the exam, you'll be required to use the proper working. This can be used to check your answer, but the real power of the finance solver can be seen when we look at examples on loans and amortization. In fact, some of those questions cannot be solved without the use of the finance solver, okay? So in the next video, we are gonna take some examples starting with compound interest, but the future videos, we'll see the other examples also. See you in that video.